Hello everyone. This is my first lecture on mechanics semester 4. In this topic, I will teach unit 2 dynamics. And let us start the topic with simple harmonic motion or SHM. First, we will define what is simple harmonic motion. The kind of motion in which a particle moves in a straight line in such a manner that its acceleration at any point of its motion is always directed towards some fixed point on the line and is proportional to its displacement from that initial or fixed point is called a SHM. So the points to be remember is the particle moves in a straight line and its acceleration is directed towards some fixed point on the line and is proportional to its displacement. We all know that the expression for acceleration is d2x by dt square. So for SHM, d2x by dt square is proportional to x, where x is the displacement. Now come to a theorem. A particle starts from rest and moves along a straight line with an acceleration which is always directed towards a fixed point. Discuss the motion. From the statement of the theorem, it is clear that we are discussing about SHM because the particle moves along the straight line and acceleration directed towards a fixed point and varies as distance from the fixed point which are the properties of SHM. So we have to discuss the motion. Let A O A dash be the straight line in which O be the fixed point such that O A is equal to small a is equal to O A dash. Let a particle starts to move from rest from the point A and let P be the position of the particle. Let this point be P. So P be the position of the particle after time t such that the distance OP is equal to x. Let the acceleration at this point be d2x by dt square in the direction OP. Then according to the statement of the theorem d2x by dt square is proportional to x and if we remove the proportionality sign we will get a constant let this constant be mu. So d2x by dt square is equal to minus mu x. Give it as equation 1. And here negative sign is taken because x decreases with time t. And here mu is the proportionality constant. Now multiply equation 1 with 2 dx by dt on both sides. We have 2 dx by this should be dt d2x by dt square equal to minus mu x 2 dx by dt. And from uh, the differentiation, we know that if we differentiate dx by dt whole square, we will get 2 dx by dt into d2x by dt square. So the left hand side can be written as d by dt of dx by dt whole square. Similarly, the differentiation of x square with respect to 2 is 2x dx by dt. So the right hand side can be written as minus mu d by dt of x square. Now if we integrate both sides with respect to t, we will get dx by dt whole square equal to minus mu x square plus a integration constant c1. Now 
Now we will apply the initial conditions. So initially at A, because the particle is at rest, so dx by dt is 0 and the distance OA is equal to small a, so x is equal to small a. Substituting these values in the previous equation, we will get C1 is equal to mu a square. So substituting the value of C1 in dx by dt whole square, dx by dt whole square becomes minus mu x square plus mu a square. Taking mu common, it will become mu a square minus x square. And this implies dx by dt is under root mu a square minus x square. Here we have both the signs plus and minus but we will take a negative sign again because x decreases with time t. So this is the expression for velocity. Give it as equation 2. Now proceed further. Equation 2 further can be written as dx by under root a square minus x square is equal to minus under root mu dt on integration we get sin inverse x by a is equal to minus under root mu t plus again an integration constant c2 again we will apply the initial conditions so initially at a x is equal to a and time t is equal to 0 substituting x and t in the above equation we will get c2 is equal to pi by 2 so sin inverse x by a is equal to minus root mu t plus pi by 2 which after simplification becomes x by a is equal to cos root mu t so x is equal to a cos root mu t give it as equation 3 if we find the value of t from here we can write t is equal to 1 by root mu cos inverse x by a give it as equation 4 Thus equations 1, 2, 3 and 4 gives the motion of the particle. Equation 1 gives acceleration. Equation 2 gives velocity. Equation 3 gives displacement. And equation 4 gives time. We further discuss the motion that it moves in a straight line. So the particle moves from A and will reach to the point O. So when the particle reaches at O, we will discuss the motion, then x becomes 0. So equation 1 implies d2x by dt square equal to 0, that is acceleration of the particle vanishes. Equation 2 implies when x is equal to 0, dx by dt is minus a under root mu. That is at O, the magnitude of the velocity is a root mu. And negative sign shows that the particle will move to the left side of the point O. Similarly, if we put x is equal to 0 in equation 4, we will get t is equal to pi by 2 root mu. That is the time taken by the particle to move from point A to point O is pi by 2 root mu. Now, particle is moving to the left side of O and will reach to the point A dash. So we will discuss the motion when the particle reaches at A dash. Then x is equal to minus A. Equation 1 implies d2x by dt square equal to mu A. That is particle regain its maximum acceleration. And equation 2 implies dx by dt equal to 0 when x is equal to minus A. That is, the velocity vanishes or the particle comes to rest at A dash for some instant and then will move towards the fixed point O and comes to A at which the velocity of the particle regain its original acceleration and hence retraces its path. So, consequently, the motion of the particle is SHM because it moves on the straight line. Now what is periodic time? We will discuss about the periodic time of SHM. The time for a complete oscillation that is from A to A dash and back again is called periodic time or period of oscillation and is equal to 4t small t. 
therefore the time period of the particle is 4t the time period or periodic time can be denoted by capital T so capital T is equal to 4 into small t the value of small t we have uh, find out earlier which is equal to pi by 2 root mu so capital T is equal to 2 pi by root mu now amplitude the quantity small a which is the greatest distance of the particle from O is called the amplitude of oscillation. O is called the center of oscillation. Thus by amplitude we mean the maximum distance through which the particle vibrates under a SHM on either sides of the center of oscillation. Frequency of motion. The reciprocal of the time period is called frequency of the motion usually denoted by n that is n is equal to 1 by t is equal to root mu by 2 pi. So this is all for this lecture.